Welcome to the Spline Plus Mesh tutorial. In this video, we'll explore the Spline Plus Mesh package, which specializes in generating procedural meshes along spline branches using powerful mesh modifiers. The most popular modifier is Mesh Deform, which aligns or deforms custom meshes, created in programs like 3ds Max or Blender, along spline branches. Mesh Deform is a versatile tool that helps you fully harness the potential of Spline Plus. Let's dive into Mesh Deform and its unique features. We've already set up a basic spline shape, so let's add the Mesh Deform modifier. First, we'll use a wooden fence model made in 3ds Max to create a barrier around the area. We'll apply a 90 degree rotation on the Y axis to fix the fence model's alignment along the spline. Then, we'll adjust other settings, like spacing, until we're satisfied with the result. There are two types of deformation in mesh deform. The first is alignment only, which aligns the generated mesh along the spline. The second is deformation, which first aligns and then deforms the mesh to perfectly follow the spline shape. You can clearly see the difference in this example. It's also worth mentioning that you can globally control the processing type for meshes set to deformation. Mesh Deform offers multi-threading, which can be enabled to improve performance. Next, we're going to create a gap that will serve as a gate for our fenced area. To do this, we'll use the range setting to open up the space. We'll take advantage of Spline Plus projection to create a more dynamic and realistic design by making our generated mesh follow the terrain's shape. Next, we'll add more detail by using a pillar model. Just like the fence, the deformation type will be set to alignment. For the pillar, we need to make sure it doesn't follow the spline's normal direction for a more realistic effect. Pillars should always face upward, regardless of the ground or spline normals. To achieve this, we'll use the rotation lock feature by setting its value to YZ. It's important to mention that node normal and scale are primarily designed to affect the procedural mesh generated by the Spline Plus Mesh package. Let's first try changing the node scale. As you can see, it properly affects the generated mesh, allowing us to control the mesh scale at specific nodes. This can be really handy. Now, let's try adjusting the node normal. You might notice it's not working, and that's because our normals are being overridden by the projection which we currently have enabled. To regain control over the normals while keeping the projection active, we need to go to the projection menu and set preserve normals to true. Right now, the value is set to false, meaning the spline's normals are dependent on the 3D terrain surface normals, which you can clearly see here. Let's try again. And now, as you can see, it's working as expected. One of the cool features that can be really handy is Mirror. It saves time and resources when duplicating objects. For this demonstration, let's apply the Mirror feature to the pillar model and mirror it along the x-axis. To adjust the distance between the two mirrored meshes, Simply go to the Transform menu and find the Offset settings. Since we mirrored along the x-axis, we'll change the x-value of the offset to get the correct mirroring effect. Now, let's move on to creating some architectural structures in the middle of the fenced area to add more life and detail to the scene. We'll start by using an old 3D pillar model originally built in 3ds Max. A 
and use the powerful randomization features offered by Mesh Deform for spacing, offset, rotation, and scale to create a unique design. If the current pattern isn't what you're looking for, you can always generate a new one. Just click on the Seed button to create a new random pattern until you're satisfied with the result. We can use the Branch Prefab's preview area to copy, paste, or duplicate the selected prefab. Then, simply swap the game object by selecting a new prefab from the project window and use the copied settings to save time. This way, you don't have to start from scratch. Just make a few adjustments until you're satisfied with the result. Let's repeat the same process with other prefabs to create a richer and more diverse scene. As you can see, the result is really impressive, and this was all built in just a few minutes using a few 3D models. We were able to create a stunning and diverse environment in no time. One important thing to note is that Spline Plus is highly optimized. No updates are called unless necessary. This means spline shape recalculations only happen when changes are made that require it, such as moving a node or adjusting crucial settings. Every time a spline update is triggered, the Spline Plus Mesh update is called as well, ensuring smooth and efficient performance. That wraps up our tutorial on Mesh Deform in Spline Plus Mesh. As you've seen, this powerful tool lets you align and deform custom meshes along splines, offering endless possibilities for your 3D environments. From adjusting scale and normals to applying mirroring and using randomization, Mesh Deform gives you full control over your scene. Thanks for watching. If you found this tutorial helpful, be sure to check out our other videos for more tips and tricks. Don't forget to subscribe for future tutorials and feel free to leave any questions in the comments below. See you next time.